I go on to the second slide that introduced the concept of metabolic myopathies, that are a number of muscle disorders where an enzyme defect causes a metabolic block. So one of the most well-known is pompe disease, called also glycogen storage type 2, that is due to a lysosomal deficiency of the acid glucosidase, as was demonstrated by Hertz. And there are three forms, infantile, juvenile, and adult. And uh, what is interesting is that uh, nowadays, the most advanced uh, regions, but uh, also Taiwan and uh, also in the state are organizing screening for uh, these disorders because they are treatable. For instance, this is a gutter card where you can screen Pompe, Gaucher, Fabi, mucopolysaccharidosis. And this is done by a blood collection on a piece of paper. So there is no more biochemistry or there is biochemistry only after this. And uh, of course there is a complex work that follows that is uh, uh, individuate mutation because there are different type of mutation of alpha glucosidase in the infantile onset and the late onset. And then there are unfortunately also the pseudo deficiencies that have been particularly described in Taiwan. So you have to be sure then that you are dealing with a mutation for two reasons that I will explain now. The first reason is that uh, this is the classic view of uh, glycogen that you can see here in purple. You can notice here that some fiber have uh, accumulation of glycogen and some are completely normal. And this is a fiber that has uh, also some crack, you know, and this is adult onset. And here is a study that we did uh, that is kind of difficult to explain, but basically this is a child where is written Pompe, and this is a HNE, acid phosphatase, caveolin 3, and uh, this caveolin 3, this caveolin 3, is interesting because it makes different appearance in the adult and the infantile form. And uh, there is a, okay, this is the slide, thank you. So here you can see again, the difference between infantile Pompe, where you see proliferation of the Golgi, while in the adult onset, there are three cases, you see massive increase in acid phosphatase, that corresponds to an increase in lysosome, but caveolin-3, as you can see here, is fenestrated. So the muscle has a different structure, while the infantile has no fenestration. This is due to a proliferation of the lysosomal apparatus, formation of autophagosomes and other things. You know? And uh, this is important, especially for the response of the enzyme therapy that I will talk about. Here you can see, for instance, the muscle, and you can appreciate here the formation of lysosomes with some uh, material that is glycogen, but sometimes this lysosome become out of phagosome, and sometimes they rupture here, and so you have every kind of uh, alteration. So there are some correlation between genotype and phenotype. For instance, in the, the first correlation is a mutation correlation because in the adult onset there is a leaky mutation, but there is also a difference in the isoforms of uh, maltase. Okay, as you know, acid maltase uh, is synthesized and goes to the Golgi where it becomes uh, enriched with manos, then gets split and forms the
the mature forms. And the mature form is the 70 kilodalton that localized to the lysosomes binding through mano 6 phosphate that is enriched in the Golgi. And the for what is really important is to achieve at the end this active 70 kilodalton form. Okay, the newborn screening, I said, is a technique important not, not only for pompe, but for other diseases like spinal muscular atrophy and so on. And I hope that uh, Hugo will think about, organize something about uh, on the screening because this new field goes for uh, pet oxidation uh, enzyme. Okay, now from the 90, we have uh, several uh, uh, formation of uh, enzyme that has to be phosphorylated because uh, to get into the lysosome, the alpha glucose it has to be enriched with mano 6 phosphate. And in the 90, there were the first uh, trial. And uh, this was particularly instructive for the pediatric patient in which. Uh, Levin found that there was a response on the cardiac enzyme. And most patients had the regression of the pump enzyme. And the only limitation is in this pump patient is the fact that some of these are naive to uh, alpha glucosidase and they produce antibodies. And uh, as you can see here, the one that produce antibodies and the one that do not produce antibodies, cream negative material, have a different uh, evolution. So not all patients respond the same in the infantile variety. And this depends from their cream positive or cream negative status. Now, what about late onset? With a group of Italian physician, we started uh, the enzyme replacing therapy. And uh, the main problem was to produce uh, a, a, some kind of uh, evidence of their efficacy. And here you can see in brown, the patient that are not treated and red, the patient that are treated. And already from 12 months, 18 months, you can see there is an increase in their walking ability, six months and uh, this lasted up to 48 months and the mean increase was 41. We monitored the treatment. I will present some cases that I personally followed. And uh, of course, uh, we followed them uh, closely, but we used also another item. The item that I present is an item that is a patient uh, a uh, responsive uh, item. We asked the patient, how do you feel? You feel better, the same, worse. So if you feel worse, just say minus one, minus two if it can't anymore, for instance, arise from the chair after the treatment, plus one if you have can do the same thing, less difficult, and plus two if you achieve something you weren't able to do before. So this uh, outcome was applied to a group of this uh, patient that we treated. And this is the meaning of this talk. What is this PRO patient reported outcome in our court? Okay, other outcome are of course uh, MRI, but there is a problem here. This is an article by Pikekio that during treatment, there is not only increase in the muscle, but there is uh, an increase, as you can see here, of the subcutaneous adipose tissue for a reason we still don't know. Okay, now when we followed uh, here in Padua and in Brescia, this uh, patient, you can see here the increase in walking ability. You can see the two patients, the green one, and the black one on the top respond better, other didn't respond at all. So the first thing we notice is that there is high variability in response. 
And when we followed the single uh, item, like walking, climbing stairs, getting up from a chair, we found that some responded in seconds, having a faster time of getting up from the chair or walking 10 meters. But after six months, this started increasing again. The spiritual function, there was not much difference. And uh, this was a pilot study, but was extended many other studies. And basically they found the same. There is no difference in respiratory function. And uh, there is some improvement, but then patient tend again to deteriorate. Now, the objective of my talk is to have this patient response. And uh, as I said, we said uh, minus two if you feel worse, plus two if you feel better and you acquire better function. As you can see here of uh, about 65 patients we interviewed, 58 answered, and uh, two, one was felt uh, he lost function or she lost function. Uh, one, uh, minus one was four, and no change was 18. So we call this all non-responders. Then we looked at the one that said, we are doing better, and they were all together, 35 patients, and then we compare these two, you know. And uh, we looked into the age, and there was no difference between N is no responder, L is a responder. And uh, 25 were no responders, 36 were responders, and there was no difference in their age. There was no difference in disease direction before starting ERT. Then we thought maybe it's the, the mass, you know, the body mass that makes a difference, but they had uh, non-responder 25.11, responded a little bit better 27, but altogether there was no significance. The garden making state that is a way to describe uh, where the patient are is a garden making Walton score, classic score for handicap was not significantly different. What we found was different was the six minute walking test at time zero. That is the responder at the, at the beginning, a much better walking ability, while the non-responder started from less, and this was significant. So the first thing we found is that if you treat patient that I have a, a good walking ability, they feel they respond better to the enzyme and they are more likely to carry on the study. And this responded to the fact that probably there was a better penetration with uh, walking ability and so on, and there was a better respiratory function. When we look at the gender of the responders, that is the one here, there was no difference between men and women. And we looked also then to supportive therapy. We asked the patient, are you doing a diet? Because uh, Zlonim recommended in the 2003, before the year era, to do a high protein diet, low carbohydrate. And 17 of the responders were following some kind of uh, diet. And uh, uh, some of them were associated to the diet physical activity. So together, we have uh, a difference in the patients that were associated to ERT, either diet or diet and physical activity, a response that was significantly different. So this is the first evidence that uh, Concomitant treatment to ERT seems necessary. You can't just go every two weeks to the to the hospital and get the infusion. But uh, 
A physician should follow a patient with a high protein, low carbohydrate diet. Maybe aerobic low grade exercise is useful. We still don't know. And this uh, gives some uh, improvement because as you see, after some time, this patient don't respond very much. And we need uh, development with this uh, treatment. So what are the future development? Uh, there has been a new type of uh, enzyme replacement that has been done with more manners six phosphate molecules and the trial is on phase two and has demonstrated that if they have some more manners six phosphate molecules they might get other 30 meters and maybe some improvement in respiratory function another trial is being done with chaperones that uh, facilitate also the penetration of GIR. And finally, the number of groups that are uh, studying different type of gene therapy, for instance, in France, Mingotzi is uh, trying a, a new concept to uh, have an AV and uh, this deliver the enzyme to the liver. And then from the liver, it goes on to the rest of the body. So these are the perspective. We have uh, uh, some progress, but more progress is needed because this treatment is not good enough uh, for keeping the patient going for more than two or three years. Thank you. Thank you, Carlotto. Can I ask a question? Does the exercise increase the bioavailability of the enzyme to the muscle? Well, we think that, uh, as I show in the other patient, the delivery is, uh, is uh, I mean, the enzyme has to go in, you know, and has to go to the, to the, to the, once it's in the muscle, has to go to the lysosomes because it can somewhat, uh, uh, enter the sarcoplasm and uh, uh, there is uh, then a, a number of cavitation in the sarcoplasm that are formed by these caveolins. That's why I stopped so much on the slide. So I think there are barriers. I mean, penetration is one problem. And you have the second barrier is penetration inside the uh, muscle fiber of adult onset patients because they have all this uh, caveolin uh, and autophagosomes. And then at the end, when they get in, I mean, they have to be active at 70 kilodalton. So this is problem with the mano 6 phosphate receptor. But we don't have experimental evidence so far that, uh, I mean, exercise in the mouse will have more penetration. So here we need some, uh, of, of course, some knockout mice that uh, are more similar to the infantile than to the adult. So we need an, a mice that would be similar to the adult patient yes. and then exercise the mouse. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, are there any more questions out there? I can't see the... We don't have the gallery up, so. No more questions? No? A comment from Hugo, as usual. <laughs> the mice in cage with wheel. You, you need uh, a collaboration to develop the mice, the new mice. Yeah, Hugo Garraro. Okay. And, and, and uh, remember that it is very easy to exercise the mice. Well, the, 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 the as usual, have... the problem is on, not on exercise, but on your colleagues that may decide to provide the mice. The... Well, you, you have a knockout mice for the enzyme that mimics the infantile. There we are need... tens of people that can do this job. They have you to have do... to convince them to do it. But you they need have to, to do a, a mice with the EVCN1 mutation and then uh, 
get the enzyme there and study, but uh, I think this is and an this obvious And this is talk. the audience that may solve your problem, hopefully. Well, you we see next to... year if somebody has done the adult mice. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Sorry hello? for my interference. Harry? Yeah. Sorry hello. for my my over talking. Okay, next, Harry has a next question. Next speaker, please. Uh, yeah. Now, I Harry was, has a question. Yeah. I was interested in whether you sort of cell-based delivery of these enzymes. So many years ago, we looked at the delivery of lysosomal enzymes by contact from macrophages and lymphocytes into muscle. And it does occur. Uh, whether it will occur at a reasonably efficient level is another matter. But the advantage of contact dependent delivery is that it, it avoids the problem that the antibodies can't see it. And so they don't, they, it doesn't, doesn't become uh, uh, removed by, by antibody based um, um, responses. And so I wonder well, if, if anyone was looking at that these days. Yes, the antibody is important in the infantile uh, form, yeah. but that doesn't seem to be very important in the adult onset mm. uh, yeah. form. Yeah. And uh, I had a look yesterday at all the AV preparations that are going on. There is one by Birne in Florida. There is one, mm. uh, as I said, by Mingotti through yeah. the thing. I didn't see any cell-based uh, uh, delivery and I wonder it was a long while ago that we had anything to do with it we were looking at beta glucuronidase at the time uh, which there was a good mouse model for yeah it has been done in other uh, uh, mucopolysaccharidase and so on so could be done in Pompeii you know, but yeah uh, everybody's concentrated in giving the purified enzyme making a yeah. chaperone fabricating the adenovirus, but no cell therapy. Well, and, we and couldn't it, transplant, yes. uh, of course, uh, liver, I don't know. Yeah. Well, macrophages are a, are a reasonable um, carrier of these things because they get everywhere and make intimate contact with lots of things that they... Uh, Do they elicit a reaction if you get macrophages? You get in... macrophages wandering through muscle day and night, I suspect. <laughs> Just normal muscle. There, I think they're. I think they're in there surveying stuff. <laughs>